Hey guys, I just wanted to start this video with a quick thank you to all the people that's watched and subscribed to my videos so far and all the people that's followed me on Instagram. I've been receiving uh, great messages, very kind and helpful messages of encouragement which has just persuaded me or encouraged me to keep on learning this Portuguese and made the process a lot more fun. Um, so keep subscribing and keep liking my videos because it's given me a lot of drive and a lot of encouragement to, to really learn Portuguese and to be able to communicate with you Brazilians. Anyway, let's get on with the video. Okay, take number 22. So, first thing I want to talk about is change of location. I don't play the guitar, but I thought it would look good in the background, so I put it in there. Um, I've not been able to um, get my little setup with my table and you know my beers, which I usually like, because I've moved location. My flight was cancelled um, on the 1st of June, and eventually I will get back to London. Um, I am missing my family, so I would like to see them. <laughs> But I am enjoying my time in Brazil and I'm going to take everything that's happening with each day as it comes. Just roll with it, roll with it. Um, and what is nice about being in Brazil right now is experiencing the Brazilian winter, as you call it. I wouldn't really call it a winter myself because living in England we have like three months of dark, really cold days. Um, and yes, the temperature has dropped and I'm wearing a jumper because I can, it's susceptible. It's a little bit more chilly, as we say in England. Um, but it's not as cold as you Brazilians are claiming it to be. <laughs> it's just not that cold, right? For me, you know, yes, I'm wearing a jumper, but it's, it's, it's really not that cold. So I'm enjoying this, this little bit of a drop in temperature. It reminded me of something, actually. Um, English people love to talk about the weather. If you ever come to England and you're looking for like a conversation starter, just talk about weather. It's like a classic kind of office talk in, in, in the workplace. If, you, if you're new in a workplace in England as a Brazilian, my advice is talk about the weather. It changes every day, so bring up the topic and you're going to get a good conversation with an Englishman. That topic kind of makes me think how, how different English people are to Brazilians actually. And I have some like some comparisons that I can I can think about and I want to talk about but I'm going to talk about that at the end of the video because I've been studying and I have something fresh on my mind that I want to show you guys <laughs> it's my attempt of translating English sentences to Portuguese without looking at any text um, so I'm gonna crack on with that it's crack on's a good um a good expression as well if you're if you're living in England we always say crack on it means this let's get on with it um, I'm going to put a picture up of the, the sentences that I'm reading, um, which are all in English. These are what I've been learning in my lessons. Um, and I've been, I've been learning a little bit about past tense verbs, um, which obviously has been delightful because there's more, more verb endings for me to learn, more conjugations for me to learn, which is just what I wanted to know, um, actually, in this Portuguese language. Um, so yeah, I have these English sentences which I'm going to put up on the screen now. Um, there's quite a few of them and I've been trying to translate them perfectly or kind of into Portuguese with my, with my uh, knowledge, with everything that I've learned over these past few weeks. So I'm going to start from the top. Um, I have the answers in here so I can check if what I'm saying is correct or what I'm saying is wrong. Um, so yeah, let's start. Let's start. So I called you, but I didn't find you at home yesterday. Um, I have my laptop down here, by the way, which I'm looking at. So um, I will be reading the English text. Um, I called you, but I didn't find you at home yesterday. Il telefone você mas okay, wrong already. Il telefone para você mas não encontrei você. In casa on tape. Let's have a check. Il telefone para você, mas não encontrei você em casa on tape. 
got it right. Next one, I had to buy new shoes last month. Il precise. Il precise. Zapatos novos. O mes pasado. Precise. I got it wrong. Okay, il precise comprar zapatos novos. O mes pasado. Eu preciso comprar. Yes. That's the correct way to say it. Comprar. 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 It's infinitive. This one is. Last week they took the bus on that corner. As semana passado eles pegaram o omnibus naquela esquina. Yes. Got it right. Okay, next one. He opened the books before class. Eli abriu. Eli abriu os livros antes ao aula. Yes, I always get antes and the boys the wrong way around. But I got that one right. Okay, next one. The children played in the yard yesterday. Okay. As crianças brincaram. O quintal ontem. Oh, close. No quintal. No quintal. It's close, though. It's close. Um, the next one. Yesterday they left home together. Okay. Ah, oh, man. Ontem. Eles. Left home. Left home. 20 minutes later. More moments later. On time, Elis Besharam in casa. Oh, juntos. No. On time, Elis Besharam de casa. Juntos. Okay, next one. I brought these shoes at the corner shop. Eu comprei. Esse sapatos da sapateria na esquina. Da, ah, so close. Na and da. The, the, na and da is the wrong way round. So it's eu comprei esse. Eu comprei esse sapatos. Uh, Na sapaterio da esquina. There you go. It's the na and da, the prepositions I keep getting mixed up with. I need to go back to my video where I talked about prepositions and watch it because I need to, I need to refresh my mind on prepositions. I need to work on them a little bit more because um, I'm getting a little bit confused with prepositions when forming sentences. Um, I'm getting so close to being able to form sentences from the top of my head um, but yeah it's the prepositions that are holding me back a little bit so I need to do a little bit more research on those. Next one is Dr. Schneider taught Marilena German last year. If you watched my last video you know that I struggled with Marilena, the name is very annoying to pronounce for me. Dr. Schneider emprenderam Marilena alamão ou ano passado? No. What am I talking about? Aprender and taught and learn. It's two different words, obviously. So it's actually Dr. Schneider in Sanon, Marilena, Alamon, no ano passado. Close, but not close enough. Yesterday the students learned the past tense. Yesterday. Ontem, os alunos aprenderam. I don't know the past tense. O preto, o o preto rito. On time, o salunas aprenderam o preto rito. Carlos played the clarinet at the party last night. Carlos tocou, Carlos tocou o clarinet na festa, na 
on team and Noichi. No, it's wrong. Okay, let's try again. Carlos Toko o Clara Nechi na festa na on team Noichi. I have na Noichi Posada. Although on team and Noichi is close enough. On team Noichi is close enough, so I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> so yeah, that's the sentences I've been learning and um now what I'm trying to move on to doing is translating English directly to Portuguese so it's kind of a challenge um, I'm having to sort of rummage through my brain search through my brain to find the words but I think this is part of the process of learning um, another language is that you start to translate the words and eventually um, the more you speak then the more natural it is just to actually say the sentences in that language that you're trying to learn so it's the next step and, and I'll keep practicing and hopefully um, hopefully soon I'll be able to speak these sentences without thinking of how to exactly translate them from English. Okay, so in the beginning of the video I spoke about some differences between um, English and Brazilians. I'm not going to go into too much detail um, with like loads of comparisons, I just want to compare like one thing. Something that I've noticed is the uh, personality differences. Um, or shall I say the kind of um, habits. Uh, in England we are quite reserved and quite cold so it takes a little bit longer to get to know us. For example if you're like working in the English workplace I feel like it would probably take a little bit longer for you to get to know people properly. Um, make friends it's probably a little bit more challenging in England than it is in Brazil. Um, me personally being in Brazil I've experienced like uh, a lot of very kind and warm people. Um, a lot of people offering to help me which has been really nice um, and my experience in, in with Brazilians it has been nothing but great to be honest. Um, the very warm people in Brazil. Uh, England we're a little bit more cold, a bit more standoffish. Um, we're not so quick to make conversation and that's why I said like the weather thing was more like a typical conversation starter for an English person. For example if you meet an English person in a bar or a pub and actually it's probably not a good example because when we drink a lot we just talk so we talk loads so let's say like you meet an English person at a work event um, or in a workplace and the differences are with English people you're most likely to talk about the kind of current events what's been in the news or the weather the weather is a perfect example, it changes all the time, it's a current topic, we find it easier to talk about the weather. We're less personal. Brazilians, they ask you a lot more personal questions, you know, where are you from, where was you born, um, what do you like to do, just these kind of questions, um, just a little bit more personal. Um, and. It's actually quite nice to be honest because in terms of getting to know people it makes it easier when, when you kind of break down these personal barriers um, that English people have. We kind of have this I don't know you, you don't know me kind of feel um, so do not, do not impose on my privacy whereas Brazilians have less privacy, they're a bit more open um, so it makes it easier to make friends here, it makes it easier to get to know people um, and that's, that's some of the differences that I've noticed, um, especially since doing this language learning where I've been able to speak more to Brazilians. Um, you've made me very welcome in Brazil and you've welcomed me to learn your language with, by offering me help, encouragement and it's really nice. So yes, um, I have no complaints. Obviously no one's perfect. and. There are some Brazilians that are probably are not very nice people, but from my personal experience, the people that I've met here in Brazil, it's been nothing but positivity. And it's nice. And not to say that English people are not nice. If you do go to England, um, we are very nice people. It just takes a little bit longer for you to break down our barriers. Like we're reserved. We, we come with this tough exterior. Um, and it takes a little longer to get to know us. Take us to a pub, give us some drink, give us some beer and we'll open up. Um, and that's the way we are. Most, most, most drunken nights are the best way to get to know English people <laughs> and if you don't drink, good luck. <laughs>
But yes, again, thank you for watching these videos. Um, I'm enjoying the process of making them. I'm really enjoying the process of learning Portuguese with you guys. So keep watching, subscribe and like, and I'll see you in the next video.